Hi there folks, this is Dawn at Affordable Desert Living. And today is a red letter day. I've got solar power. It's all hooked up and running. So let's go inside and I'll show you all the components and just show you how it works. And a um, little bit of history for me. Um, I had encountered some serious power bills when I was in California and I never forgot that. And I thought, wow, if I could just be free of the cost of electricity, that would be fantastic. And I've always known solar was the answer for me. So now that I knew that I wanted to go the solar route, I realized I've got a lot to learn. I don't know anything about volts and amps and wattage and components. What's a combiner box? What's a charge controller? No idea. So like anyone living off grid, the first order of the day is to determine what power needs you have, what appliances you want to run, and roughly the total wattage that's going to be needed to operate those items. Here in Arizona, one of the big draws is cooling and then heating. It gets cold here too. Uh, last couple days has been, oh, 15 degrees probably, maybe colder. So your biggest draw on your electricity is always going to be heating and cooling. So to cut down on the solar demands for my little uh, building here, I've relegated a few important items to propane. I'm going to have uh, a propane stove and oven and an on-demand hot water system that's also propane. Water pumps take a lot of electricity and I'm really fortunate in that I already have my water pump and it's solar which is fantastic. I got it from RPS pumps and it has its own panels so there won't be any draw at all on my system. So based on other YouTubers in Cochise County, uh, I thought maybe the only recourse I had was to uh, obtain a Tesla battery, a used Tesla battery from eBay. So since I have zero electrical skills and I didn't know anyone that would have the time to help me hooking up this kind of unconventional battery. I just gave up on that one. I certainly didn't want to go with lead acid batteries. Ooh, that technology and babying them all the time. Not interested. It took me a couple years to finally decide and commit to this product from Point Zero Energy. It's called the Titan. So it appears to be really well made and comes with a two year warranty. Compare that to a what's called a kit for a cabin, $6,524. But guess what? That kit comes with no batteries. I'd say the only drawback to the Titan is it's so hard to get a hold of. I ordered mine November 2020 and finally the Titan and two batteries came on around the 1st of May 2021. But it was worth the wait. So here I am using electrical tape to put these solar wires together so it'll make it a lot easier to feed them through the 3 inch Schedule 40 pipe. So I am aware that people use a variety of items to feed wire through conduit, including fish tape and other methods. But I decided to go the more simplistic route, the good old fashioned stone in a plastic bag tied to a, a nylon rope method. So the goal here folks is to uh, tie all of these cables onto this rope and pull it all the way through this three inch schedule 40 pipe all the way down to the cabin so that then this is all protected from rodents and then of course I'll build this up with an elbow and make this so that nobody can enter in from this end too. So wish me luck I've never done anything like this before. So I used a variety of tools to make the hole in the floor. The first hole I made was out of alignment, so I did another one.
Now the PVC pipe can enter the floor with ease. Next item on the list of to do things, get rid of this Choya cactus that was in the road and nothing I want to encounter while laying pipe, that's for sure. Now I'm lining up the pipe to travel a direct line from the panels to the cabin. So um, I'm going to research as far as gluing this. Um, I'm assuming I probably need to. Um, but for now, the uh, <coughs> all of the solar uh, wire is uh, safe in this PVC, which is a good thing. Sounds like it's up there. That's a good sign. So this is really temporary. So what I did is I filled the hole in. Uh, I kind of custom cut some foam board. So before I had solar panels, what I did for months and months is I charged the Titan with the Titan charger that came with the system. Basically has a three prong plug and one end. And on the other end, is this connector here that goes right into the Titan. Right over there, hopefully you can see it, is uh, a surge protector. And I would just plug this Titan battery charger right into the surge protector. That took a lot of power from the uh, generator. And the generator really groaned trying to charge the Titan. And as a matter of fact, the poor old generator died but I had a warranty and I got another Predator generator from Harbor Freight. So you can see with the readout and um, it's drawing about 12 watts down here. And that means that it's just taking 12 watts to run the unit just as a standing unit with nothing plugged in at all. And the minus sign here indicates that it's drawing power rather than producing. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to plug in these items one by one and you can see how much they draw, which is a really cool thing with this unit. First thing I'm going to do is plug in the uh, refrigerator. And now you'll see the Titan is adjusting for that going, OK, there's a refrigerator plugged in. And the amazing thing about this little refrigerator is it just draws so little wattage around 90 watts. Next I'm going to plug in my router and it doesn't draw much power at all. As a matter of fact you'll see that things have dropped down way down to like just 18 watts of usage and that's because the refrigerator has kicked off and the Mophie's drawing so little it's not even worth mentioning which is great. So next, let's put in the computer and the monitor. Now we have our router, the computer, the monitor, and our refrigerator all plugged in. So in goes our pole lamp, which is a 100 watt LED light in that. So now at this point, folks, we have a um, refrigerator plugged in, a pole lamp with the 100 watt LED light, the computer monitor and the computer itself, my fast internet router, and my smartphone. And now you can see a surge <clears throat> where the Titan's adjusting for all that and showing that it's drawing 271 watts. Now there's going to be a big change because I'm going to plug in my toaster. Okay, this wonderful little toaster cost me a total of $3 at the Bisbee thrift shop. Let's push things down and see what happens with our power draw. Now you can see that the toaster is taking around 1,000 watts. It's showing 1 kilowatt, which is 1,000 watts. Now, of course, we're still at 75% of these two 2,000 watt lithium ion batteries. So I'm going to plug in the four set of panels and they're going to be plugged right into that port there. So we're going to pop in the connector here to those four 
340 watt panels and then we'll just see how much is being brought in even this early. At approximately 8 o'clock here in the morning, even with all these items plugged in, now the four 340 watt panels are starting to put power into the Titan. And you can tell that because the screen starts flashing and now there's no minus here, it's a plus. So at about 8.30 in the morning, you can see now we're pulling in about 340 watts from those four 340 watt panels. So while the solar panels are pulling in some power and the Titan is working hard to receive it, um, since it's uh, only uh, early morning, I'm just going to go for a walk and uh, go birding. And this is already connected nicely, one panel to the other here, positive and negatives joined. So now I'll snip the ties holding this cable. There we go. Now that's free. So this is where it gets a bit tricky and uh, <laughs> I just I'm going to duplicate what I did on the other four panels just because it worked and uh, I'll do this safely I'm still learning about all this and we'll go from there so first thing I'm going to do is this positive cable coming from the cabin is going to be connected like this and that's going to be joined to this guy It's a little stiff, but I hear the click. Now I'm going to check and make sure there's no un unhooked up cables. Okay, that was wrong. I've still got a connector here, so I'm going to go to work and figure out what that should have been connected to. At this point, folks, if it looks kind of confusing, I can imagine. Um, it's confusing to me too except for I'm going by a diagram I was given by Point Zero Energy. And also, if you see this jumble of cables, trust me, I am not happy with a jumble of cables. I'll neaten that all up later. But I want to connect everything first and uh, check to see it works properly. And down into here, I'm going to bring these cables up out of the way there. As I mentioned earlier, uh, we'll bury all of that at some point. And that's running about 75 feet all the way over to the tiny cabin. And there as you can see they're coming out of the pipe and up into the cabin. So these are the cables that run out side to the other four panels. And so I'm going to hook those up. All right, so now we will plug these into the Titan as well. So that's potentially another 1000 watts of power that can go into the Titan. So again, the maximum you can ever put into the Titan is 2000 watts running in here. But the storage, remember, there's two 2000 watt batteries here. So that means that the power coming into these can top these two batteries up to equal 4000 watts. So these two big heavy square 
black items are the batteries. These are lithium ion, and meaning I don't have to do anything with them, and they just snap together with each other and then connect to the power unit itself. So you've got a 3000 watt inverter inside here, and each of these are 2000 watts of storage. So essentially, when this is charged, this is a 4000 watt battery bank. Well, it's 8.30 in the morning, and our refrigerator was on all night, and I never unplugged my MoFi router from my computer as well. So I woke up this morning to the Titan being approximately 90% charged. And already, all of those panels are pulling in a lot of power. It's over a kilowatt, so over a thousand watts of power and it's 92% charged. So that means probably by around nine this morning, there will be 4,000 watts of power available. I'm absolutely delighted with this setup and I hope you folks found it interesting. Um, one of the things though for the future is I want to put a mini split in this cabin and that is why I oversized the solar array. I hope that'll work but I'm willing to change things up and maybe even beef up my system if I need to in the future. So a logical question a lot of you would be asking would be, is Don just gonna run extension cords throughout this whole building and then have them plug into the Titan and that's how he gets his power? Um, I could do that, but actually the goal is to have outlets all the way around this building where they're most needed, have those wired, have the wires run all the way to the back of the building and connect into a standard fuse box. And then out of that fuse box, a thick cord with a specialized 30 amp RV plug on the end of it plugs into the Titan. And the great thing, the Titan already has one of those 30 amp specialized RV outlets where you can plug that into. So that all be said, I'd like to extend an invitation to any licensed electricians in the Tucson and Sierra Vista area that would like to come down this way and help me uh, it, with this little building. And if you would, drop me a note at affordabledesertliving at gmail.com. Thank you. Now we're going to get some uh, ketchup for our eggs. I'm always amazed at the number of people I've met that don't do ketchup on their eggs. So if you're a ketchup on eggs fan, like me, leave it in the comments below. All that working with solar can make a guy hungry. Hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. Hmm. Raspberry jam, my favorite. So thank you so much for watching this video, folks. I hope it was helpful in some way, understanding solar. If you've got any questions about all this, let me know. Send me an email or leave uh, the questions in the comments below and I'll get back to you. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and also hit the notification bell thing. That'll let you know when the next video is coming up. Thank you very much. And we'll see you on the next video.